Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Doing good. Getting ready for some uh, theory crafty, star crafty talk. Yeah, theory craft, star crafty talk is is what I'm going. Again, <laughs> I, I I'm not the best at this game by, by far, but I'm just trying to understand a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's the that's the only goal because I I feel like I don't know, man. There's just a lot to it. I mean, there. Yeah, I StarCraft Two is a game that uh, it has it's like like you know like like any game it has like a meta right that's repetitive and uh right you know stuff like that that could be easier to learn uh mm -hmm. but like definitely this game has a lot of decision making on the fly where you can definitely take approach a situation like 10 different ways and some ways it will definitely be better than others yeah yeah and that's kind of where i'm at because I, I i i watch all the videos you know i'm like a starcraft nerd i'll watch like the bronze gm and i'll watch the coaching and i'll watch the and i'll try to apply it and then oh, something yeah. random will happen or something you know just i just haven't seen before and thanks I'm like, oh, again well, for shit. the 2 gm I, I guess i'll just quit i guess i'll just like well, i guess i'll lose that's yeah, fine yeah <laughs> uh yeah i mean it there's definitely moments where uh if you make a bad decision you can definitely just throw the game away and then like you might not realize it but if you made a different kind of decision uh and that yeah that and that's where i wanted to talk about because yeah. i don't even think i know yep. Well, Ali and Ali, thank you very so much like, for the nine. I, I thank you, thank you. I wanted to talk with you because I think that there's things that are happening where I'm playing and I'm like, I, I don't even know that I'm, like, I'm already losing, for example. Like, if I didn't do this or didn't do that, that type of thing. Yeah, so I will say, um, like, just to make, I want this to be, uh, you know, this is how you should, your brain should always approach the situation. But okay. every single time there is a situation that arises inside a game of StarCraft 2 that you're playing, it's not always going to be the same as the amount of choices you've given yourself to have at that point in time. And uh, like, for instance, you might play two games in a row and you might be like, oh, he's doing what it looks like the same thing the last guy did. And last time sure. I did this. And now you're like, you know what I'm going to do? It looks the same. I'm going to do the same thing in the last game because it worked last time. And this time it might fail. And you'd be like, wait, what? It worked last time yeah. and it didn't work this time. So now I'm confused. Mm -hmm. So the reason why that works like that is because... The level of power that your options have is also really, really, really based on the setup that you've given yourself throughout the game, like your macro. So okay. let's just say that let's, let's just to give a hypothetical that I feel like will really be easy to understand. Okay. Let's let's say in the development stage of the game, uh, two two different games, both are macro games. Neither player is really doing an all in or it really like anything really aggressive. It's just like maybe a tiny bit of harassment, but mostly just macro on both sides. And let's okay. say both games get to the point where they're at like eight minutes. And now at eight minutes, something big happens. Like a big attack happens and you decide to take it, the, the fight a certain way. And in one game it works. But in the game that it works, let's say like your power level going into that point in time is like 85% as to how powerful you could be if you were playing perfect. At Perfect would be 100. Okay? Okay. Sure. And then let's say your opponent was like at a 71 so you're like 14% more powerful going into that engagement, that particular game, because you just had a stronger early to mid game in that, sure, in that game. Sure. And let's say the other, another game happens, and it's, it's hard to tell this sometimes, and you're the one playing with Fog of War, all right? And you can't always see everything, like, because you don't have yes. that back. But now yes. let's say the second game happens where you, the exact, the, your opponent does the exact same build again. It's like a different player, but it's the same build. And let's say mm -hmm. this time he has a power level of like 90% going into that eight minute mark. And now this time, maybe you have like a 74 because let's yeah. say it was like a Reaper. That's all it was. And the Reaper got like two more drum kills than the previous guy. Gotcha. And now you're like... That threw everything off and yeah, sure. Well, and like maybe the Reaper, not only did it, was it more annoying in terms of the fact that it killed more, but maybe it distracted you longer. It made you slow down a little bit. You don't, and you don't realize how many little things that happened where it just like threw you off a little bit. Maybe yeah. it made you miss an inject and you're like, fuck, okay. And you take the fight the way you did last time, and you're like, why did I die this time? I should have won, because last time I won, and I feel like I was in the same spot. But in reality, you yeah. weren't. Uh, no, that's a good way of looking at it, because I there's just so much volatility, I guess, is the word you yeah. would use, because it's just so much. I, I just want you to know, I just really want you to know that while we talk about this, you can't always expect your, to give, like to have the same solutions to every problem. 
because okay. it really is based heavily on how you're prepared you are in going into that solution. Like, you can't always just say, oh, Ling Bane beats Marine. Like, that's a super simple way to say it. You'd be like, oh, yeah, he goes Marine, I go Ling Bane. Easy. That, that'll win. And then, ideally, that does work. But that doesn't right. actually work if, like, he's got twice the supply as you. Right. And then right. you're like, fuck, okay. he just, like, I can't, like, kill it all. He just runs away and, like, kites me down and then I just, everything dies. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, do you have, uh... Did you want? Did you want to look at like a replay as well? That uh... yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Is that no? Is that it's totally good? Fine. yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay. I I was gonna say visuals. I think visuals help a lot more at understanding things. Okay. Uh, so the easiest way to do it would be just grab your replay and then just uh, yeah. wherever it is and drag and drop it into like uh, the Discord chat. That like you're just gonna send me a message when it's the replay. Okay. Do I have to go into like files or can I do it from the actual Starcraft? Thing? So you you have to do it on your desktop. So if you name the replay, the fastest way you can find it is if you just search it on your computer. Like search the okay. name of what it is. And like searching okay. would be like control escape brings up in your little search bar. If you're on Windows, that is. Okay. Deal. All right, hold on real quick. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I oh. played a couple just in case we wanted to look at one. Yeah, I think it'll definitely help for sure. Well, because also it gets tough because there's like you know when I when I follow like your your videos and there's like you know like the two base kind of roach into hydra type thing or like what kind of um, gets me stuck is <coughs> when do you transition to like a third base and when do you like drone it or when do you you know like I've been doing the um what is it called the rule of one gas build which is like seems to work out uh, really effectively sometimes yeah so it's just yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess I'll see in the replay, but yeah. Uh, what like? And I, I, if I'm distracting you while you're trying to do this, you can let me know, and I'll give you a second. No, but, you're totally fine. Uh, what a uh, general composition are you kind of trying to like make your your standard? I I, I guess overall, it's it's kind of like Roach Roach Hydra into Lurkers. Okay. It's probably the the main. I sure. I I work with um, Ling Ling Bane a little bit too, but like just I'm trying to do something that's like simple that I can work on like the fundamentals while uh -huh. also still doing a composition that can yeah you know. And what was your uh just sorry I, if if you told me already I apologize but what was your league again? I'm Grandmaster number ten in the world. Oh no. fuck yeah. Um yeah yeah uh, <laughs> platinum too. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, again, it probably is a lot. Of just... Grandmaster number ten. Yeah, in the yeah world. Grandmaster top ten. I just needed to get that extra push in there to get top five. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Dude. No, no. Uh, all right. Sorry, I'm finding this right now. You're all good. It's a good one. Just happy with some of this stuff. No, no, that's right too. I'm on a stream, aren't I? So everyone's like, "Look out!" Oh, you're, you're at Microsoft. You're, you're all good, man. Okay. I, uh, I, I would keep talking to you, but I, uh, I also don't want to. Okay, I know it's distracting to like listen to me and have a conversation with me while you're doing your thing. Oh, you're totally fine. Right. Well, but I can give you another way to find it too, if, uh, if the search. Is that thing okay? Is can right. you do that? Is that okay? Yeah. Is that easier? Yeah. yeah. So, I'll just do you know where your file file explorer is? Yes. Like, open that really fast. Okay. Go to, on the left side, go to, in the middle of the list, pretty much, go to Documents. Okay. And then on the right side, do you see a folder for StarCraft 2? Also, it, it'll work, yes. is, oh, you do, you found it? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so open StarCraft 2. Okay. And then now at the top of it, open Accounts. Okay. And then, how many accounts do you have on there? Just, how many? just, just the one. Okay, perfect. It goes good. Because it's numbered. So, just open the one then. Okay. And then open the next one you see. Okay. And then hit then replays. Replace. And then multiplayer. Okay. And then it'll all okay. be in there. Yeah, it's like oh, number good. Yeah, it's like number code. So, I was like, fuck. If you have like four people using your computer with you, this could be a bit of a 
file an error situation. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but sure. You're, you're already, if you already found it, then that's good. Okay, no, yeah, we're good. And then you can you can organize it. If you hit date modified, you can organize it chronologically. Oh, there we go. I was about to say, I'm like, I don't know if me playing Protoss from three years ago is going to do real well yeah. right now. Um, okay. and, then, uh, and then you can grab, then you can see what you played literally on the 21st of uh, January. So for what you played today. Awesome. Okay, let's do. There's, I think losing is probably better than winning, right? It doesn't matter. Honestly, it does not matter. Okay, I'll pick. Because I'll, I'll get to see how your tendencies are either way. Okay. We'll do this one, and then I'll drop it. Okay. Hey, we're in business. I think we got this going. Okay, sorry. Oh, oh. dropping now. Okay. I'm so confused. Isn't there a way to do it in StarCraft? Just hit show and folder. I hope that that did something. Oh, there is. You just taught me something. I'll tell him to do that if he's still is having a problem here. Are you able to see that? Uh, it hasn't got there yet. Oh, okay, sorry. Just kind of enter and send it like a message. If it's if it's like in the Discord, if it's in the chat, there, now there I can go. see it. All right, good shit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I'm gonna share this with you now on my Discord okay. screen, so you don't even need to be logged into StarCraft. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, this way you can see my perspective while I go over it and stuff. Okay. And then right now you should see it right there. Yep. And then you can like full screen it and stuff if you want to. Okay. Uh, but anyways. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the game from your perspective and, uh, talk about what you see, talk about like what is going on for you. Okay. Deal. Uh, and yeah, like throughout this, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. Like if I'm mid sentence okay. and you're like, I really want to say this before I forget, just start talking and I'll stop and then I'll come back to what I was talking about okay. after. Okay. It's totally fine. Okay. Deal. <clears throat> um, all right. So, so far, you know, your build's fine. I would say the only thing you can really make better is stacking your patches, the close ones. It's like uh, flossing, man. It's like you're supposed to, but yeah. God, it's just a lot of work. It does make a difference. So I always, okay. I always talk okay. about it, but if you don't, because okay. if you don't do it, there's nothing else you're doing anyways. Because there's like that, no, no reason that's to. true. It's just yeah. laziness. Okay. So right here, if this is a roach build, this is off mm -hmm. right now, I would say. Okay. Uh, going gas pre pool. This is super standard, right? Like a lot of people are probably like, "Oh yeah," in ZVT or in all matchups, like yeah. either a 17 or a 16 hatch. 16 hatch is mm -hmm. usually the preferred one, but like sure. 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. This is like the most okay. standard of standards. But yeah. this is a zergling build. Yeah. This is a speedling yes. build. So if you're going speedlings, this makes sense. But if you're going for roaches, this game, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I go. I go. I do go speedlings, but I don't. That's also a thing too. I don't know if I use them the right way because if you do this, it's to get uh, feelings so you can harass, right? Th yeah, this is uh, this is definitely going to be a detriment to your economy to take gas this early and also get speed this early. And if you don't even okay. use them, it's definitely not worth it. Okay. So we'll okay. see what you do with them. We'll talk about what it is and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah, if if you plan on just going roaches, then yeah, I would say this is all this is doing is massively slowing you down. Like a build you could do to fine tune for yourself if you wanted to go roaches would be a much faster third base with the delayed gas and more queens. Oh. Like something like okay. that would be way better for just a roach guy if you want to evolve as a roach player for a little while. Sure. Okay, so you're scouting overall right there is fine. I'd say this overlord should actually come down here though. Um, On this little cliff? There's, yeah, there's nothing really okay. out here. Like if you're gonna go way okay. up there, that's that's fine. But sure. I would say this is more ideal because you could actually get a view of his natural and see like if he has a command center. Like seeing a third command center for Terran is like if they wall with it as well which sure. is very common that's really really good info to have stuff right, like that right it's definitely worthwhile to have it there for sure if if they don't wall i've run into this before where i've because i usually just start this build if they wall do you think it's always a good idea just to send feedlings and just be like what with you what you can cut so up? no matter what you should never think to yourself, oh yeah, I'm going to kill a bunch of SCVs or a bunch of probes against Protoss or Terran. The only race you can genuinely feel like it's somewhat reliable to send speedlings into their economy early game mm -hmm. is Zerg. Uh, and oh, is okay. Zerg, Zerg can even counter it by going for like the double Evo Roachworn wall-off bullshit. 
Right. Uh, where they just like, you know, they have to let their creep spread far enough to be able to set it up so that you won't ever see it right away with your first overlord this fast, but they eventually could do it by the time you have speed. Um, but against Terran and Protoss, you should expect a wall every game. You should never think to yourself, he might not wall. They're always going to wall. Like every time it'll happen, it might not happen right away, but it will always happen. Because everybody knows that if you don't wall against Zerg, they'll fucking delete you. Uh, right. So never base a build around if he does or doesn't have a wall. I would say that's a terrible idea for you. Okay. Because uh, you should always expect there to be one. Even if there's not one now, he's going to set one up. And it's so easy for... Like, let's say Terran one minute from now when speed's about to finish. So much more money will have come into his economy. And he could easily be like, two depots, two engineering bays, fully walled. And he could, gotcha. like, afford that, no problem. And then it's a wall anyways. Okay. Yeah, the only way you're going to be able to... I would say it like this. The, the only way a wall should become irrelevant to you, if, if you also have speed links, is if you're going to either do some kind of a roach uh, based all in with zerglings. Like, let's say you're going to make like eight roaches or like ten roaches with zerglings, or maybe some of those are going to be ravagers with zerglings, or if you're going to go for a baneling all in with zerglings, then that's fine. You could not worry about a wall because you're just going to kill it. Uh, but if that's not your plan, if your plan is to make drones and make zerglings, and you're just gonna like okay. have some zerglings for like map control, don't ever think you're gonna get in the base. It's it's like low chances. It really requires a mistake from them to be able to make that work. Sure. I heard that like you're supposed to have I the first couple minutes of your build down, kind of no matter what. The the muscle memory for me is kind of the first maybe 36 supply and then it gets a little wonky donkey um yeah, sure how do you and and then you're supposed to necessarily i guess kind of like change it based off what you see is there a like an easy or simplified way to kind of make sure you have those minutes always the same like so the, re the, the what that you just said is not wrong and the way you can base that simple super simple way is you can base base number to base number so this is why I was talking about the command center. Seeing it would be important because if this guy has two bases, a general rule of thumb to make your life really easy for Zerg is you can take one more base with one economy. Better. Well, like, like, and oh, that, that, that also means, a yeah. So like taking a hatchery yeah. is fine. You could, this could be macro hatch. It could be from production. It could not be for production. It's whatever. Uh, so like just taking the simple fact of the hatchery is fine as long as you can afford it. But to okay. saturate the base is fine if your opponent has a base. So, like, he's on two bases right now. You could easily take your third and also saturate your third before you die. You still might need to make some safety units in the middle of that so you don't get harassed by, right. like, four Hellions and it just kills all your right. drones. Right. But, uh, yeah, you could easily saturate your economy because he has two bases. Because Zerg has Inject Larva and no other race has that. So you can uh, absolutely pump out enough workers for another mineral line over what they have on two bases, whether it's Protoss or Terran. Is this the same too? Again, this is this is plat, so it's probably not as applicable. But is this the same as like let's say uh, like a design play where he goes for like only thirty-two workers, stop takes only takes workers off the gas, and then you know what I mean? Like does shit like that? Uh, so if yeah, I mean if that's gonna be the case against Terran, it's I would say it's a little bit easier to deal with shit like that because generally speaking, Terran builds versus Terran builds usually are a little bit more queen centric. Uh, okay. Or, and if you're going to go roaches, then like Queen Zergling is a great combo. But if you're going to go roaches, straight up roaches are really good against almost every form of Terran pressure that they can do to you. Okay. Like, it's they're it's okay. substantially strong. Uh, against Protoss, again, same thing. Roaches are kind of mandatory against Protoss uh, overall. Okay. Even if you get speedlings early, a roach horn is, is very important against Protoss. If you skip that, that is so fucking scary. But. If you recognize a Protoss, it looks like he's going to set up for a two-base timing. You're not going to realize that until like four and a half to five minutes. So right now that you're taking the third at three minutes, which is uh, pretty standard-ish, I would say. Around three minutes is fine. Maybe you could even do it like a little a little bit faster. But okay. either, like, it's not bad at all. This is definitely not a, a slow third. Um, okay. uh, uh, like just drone, being able to drone this up, you could easily have this done. And then maybe have some drones going to it to where, like, let's say you have, like, eight drones on the middle line by 4.30. And okay. then you're making a decision. Ah, he's looking like he's going to all in the shit out of me because you scouted. 
which your scouts should right. be getting thrown down around four minutes. Like this overlord should be moving, try to moving through his base around four okay. minutes. I would say would be a great time because you'll actually have. Uh, uh, Backup and stuff. Well, yeah, like he'll actually have made choices by then. Right now, he right. could easily not have made choices, and if he made a marine, he could kill your overlord. Right. Okay. And then, um, I would say always, even like, if you're going to go for a, um, like in a speedling style, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you said you're going to go roaches. I'm pretty sure in this game, but, um, yeah. even if you're going to speedlings, if you're going to go roaches, whatever, always a good idea to, if, as soon as you can afford it, try to throw down another queen, um, at, like to, in preparation for your new base. So like, while this is building, you definitely want another queen. Cause one thing you, there's two things you want always to be happening whenever you expand especially okay. if, when it's like the earlier the expansion the more important it is so the third base is the first time it's going to happen because you have access to mm -hmm. queens but what mm -hmm. you two things you really want to happen are one a creep tumor going towards that base that's so important okay. and okay. then the second one is you want a queen at the third base as it finishes so that you can inject it immediately if you don't have those two things it slows you down massively or it makes it really risky Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so you're making more lings right now. You have now have eight lings. And then in production, you have no more, which is good. But you have eight lings now, which is definitely an investment. This overlord as well, yeah, this is this is so scary. Uh, this is great for ZVZ. Terrible for Protoss and Terran, though. Definitely okay. want it to be hidden Deal. against Protoss and Terran. Because okay. okay. a stalker or a marine would just kill that fucking so okay. fast. Okay. But this overlord, this overlord, terrible for ZVZ, great for right. versus Terran versus Protoss. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, Makes so sense. Argu I would say this, though. Arguably, because we're talking a lot of theory right now. Yeah. Arguably, this overlord is actually not terrible for ZVZ as long as you can see all exits of his ramp. Because in ZVZ, this overlord could, in theory get in and scout if he's going for a layer and you sure. could also see how okay. many gases he has which could tell you right. the earlier the more gas he has the earlier he has it it's more likely an all-in or it's more likely like a really fast tech rush like a muta build or some shit sure also i would say in general i do not mind that you saw the gases but i don't like right. that it's the center focus of your overlord's pathing what I would say okay. you'd want to do is maybe you have your pathing come down here and you could see the edge of the gases and that'd be fine. Um, realistically though, yeah, you, you want to, you probably want to be more centralized in the center of his base. Right. And closer to the ramp because the thing about Terran is, is Terran is not ideally going to be like, all right, I'm going to build a barracks here and then I'm going to build a factory and then I'm going to hide my starport or something like most right. of it's, it's kind of in a line or whatever. Yeah. And there, there, there's a reason for that. The reason why is because if they hide their tech structures, like same thing with factory, if they're like, you know, I'm going to put a factory there instead of over here, they can't use add-on swapping then. And every single right. building needs add-ons for Terran to be effective with the three military production buildings they have. So a lot of times what they'll do when they want to do a tech timing is like, for instance, make a reactor in the barracks, swap it with the factory in the, in the barracks to swap over. So now the factory has the reactor. Because it's a long build time for that fucking thing. And if they hide the factory and they just build the reactor off the factory, it massively delays the pressure window. Sure. Okay, so, that makes sense. So you definitely want to scout nearby the racks as soon as possible. Because if you go way the fuck over here instead, and you're revealing, hey, my overlord's coming to your base, way the fuck over here. And he goes, oh, I'm going to send two marines over there to kill that. You might die by the time your vision is like there. And you don't see yeah. shit on the ramp. And you're like, hmm, I actually don't know what he's right. doing now. Right. And then also, the reason why I say going through here is really important, instead of back here. You can't build a command center anywhere in this entire area. And the reason why this area is important is because if there is a command center going to get built, it's either going to be here or it's going to be here. Because you okay. can't build a command center anywhere else in the back of the base because it's too close to the resources. The only other place you might be able to build a command center would be like maybe right there. Like, like there. Uh, I don't. I, I think it could fit there, but like no one's gonna wall like that. It's because it, it's the main bases are fucking weird to wall with because they actually have rounded corners so they can squeeze through. So you'd have to make like another depot there and shit like that. But or like maybe a command center there, like that could be a thing. 
But yeah, just anyways, the point I'm trying to make is command centers are important to see, which will be on the outside, and tech is important to see, which will usually be stacked with add-ons. And if I saw the third, would it be then okay to immediately take a fourth and make economy with it? Uh, it depends. So if you see, uh, let's say your overlord scouts into his base, and you see okay. the third base when he only has like a barracks and a factory, and you see mm -hmm. a command center, and like the command center is half or like a third of the way done or like halfway done, and he's just now starting a starport, I would say, okay. yeah, you're probably pretty fine. Like you're not gonna really deal with uh, pressure here because it's, it's okay. Um, however, that's because the scout is on time, right? This right. is why you gotta understand this shit. This is why I was saying like the power level shit, where it's like it, it, you, it looks like it's the same thing, but it's not. You gotta understand yeah. why it's not the same thing. So if it was like two production buildings and a command center, and then a third production building is starting after the command center, that's very low investment into military, very high investment into economy. You could absolutely make more drones, as long as you have some kind of a harassment defense, be it queens, speedlings, roaches, whatever, the whatever you want to go for. As long as you have something to not be like, oh, my drones are dead, then you're fine. However, if it was like, let's say you scouted into his base at 454 instead of 354, and you didn't, like, that, maybe that didn't process in your brain, and you were, like, just not thinking about that, and you just said to yourself, oh, third command center, we should be okay. But it's, like, five oh, racks, there's yeah. a factory done, and there's a starport done. And he right. just now started Much the third command center. Less than three. It's more and aggression than it is. It, it's going to be a lot yeah. more aggression. And if yeah. you're like, time to fucking make mass drones for the fourth, like you're gonna be like, okay, you just get run over. Okay, <laughs> yeah, because that that's the kind of situation where even though he has a third command center, it's late enough to still give him a timing, because he has okay. seven production buildings, he has five racks, a starport, and a factory, and it, right. what the goal then for you is, or what what the situation is for Terran, <clears throat> is he's gonna attack you, and that attack is supposed to do as much damage as possible. Ideally, the more damage he does, the better it is for Terran. But he's going to attack you, and he's going to rotate into a third out of that attack. So if he really fucking cripples you, and then he has a third behind that, he's super far ahead. But let's say you completely defend it, and then you immediately rotate into drones. Because you can still make your fourth base, but let's say you don't drone until you defend his attack, and then you drone your fourth base immediately after that. You then, once again, have countered his play, and you've secured yourself a base above what he's at in a very efficient way. Because you realized, okay, this is not... Just because I see the third means I can drone. Sure. I I see the third is delayed, so I can saturate the third once I deal with the reason why it's delayed, which is because he's doing a timing. Okay, and in Platinum, because when you're doing your videos, I, I, I think a central theme is just showing a lot of the same fundamentals over and over again to really nail it into people's heads. Like, uh -huh. hey... You want to make sure you inject, you want to make sure you build overlords, you want to make sure you... You kind of do a process where you take one base at a time. Skippy Joe, thank you very much for the 19. Full, move on to a third, and then a fourth, and a fifth. And you kind of just do it in a calm manner where you're expanding across the map. Are the decisions that we're talking about right now, where it's kind of like, ooh, if there's a third with like four racks, is that is that something I should be focusing on now, or do you think that takes away from my game? This plan? is theory. This is definitely theory. Uh, so... This is this this is harder to teach because it's not consistent. Okay. It's it's not always the same. You have to just under like the biggest thing about theory that makes you understand it better is you have to understand the game clock, and you have to understand okay. that something is not normal. Like you have to like basically think of like uh like you ever seen one of those movies where there's like a pressure valve and there's like a gauge on it where it's like the, there's like a needle going left and right and if it's like to the left and it's in the green it's safe and if it's all the way to the right and it's in the red it's like super dangerous right like some visualization like that where like you have to be able to look at something and be like oh no we're safe it's safe it's safe or you have to look at something and go okay this is fucking dangerous and i can tell simply because of how what time of the game it is and you don't have to like see you don't have to see an army you don't have to see like his push you don't have to have like tanks set up at your base to know this it's simply you have to be able to tell when he builds a building is going to be a passive player or an aggressive player. And that just takes just a, a shit ton of time. Like, does that just take a lot of practice? Like, because I, I, I want to also what I wanted to talk to you about too is a way to like maybe do like the the quit and rewind thing where like is there a way where I can after a game not just be like well I guess I just lost but actually break it down to where I can be like, oh, I can learn from this. I mean, you all, you, you can learn from everything. I, I'm not going to lie. It depends on how much uh, patience you have. Um, 
Because you, you can always look at a mistake and try to figure out why you... Like, don't just say, I made a mistake, call it a day. But you can figure out why you made the mistake. Like, retrace your steps and go, what made me think this was correct? And how can I actually understand that better? Okay. Uh, but, yeah, in theory, what we're talking about is way more open-ended. And the, the, we could... This is a conversation that could go on for many hours, <laughs> for oh, sure. Okay. No, I'm not. Yeah, it's it's a lot because it's always. Okay. Every, and th this is just one example, one game, right? And it's right. always different. So, um, yeah, if we spend too long on something, by by all means, you can tell me to speed up. Uh, but the the thing about theory is that's really important to understand is you just really it, it's it, it's experience that you need to ha that you you acquire. It's like depth of knowledge that you acquire over experience, and it, there's no other way around that. Like I, playing, basically. yeah, like, like you just done. you just have to understand the game, okay. um, which is why I don't teach people this shit early on because it's so much more confusing. Right, because right. when you don't know what's going, like for instance, right now, what do you think uh, out of his base? Wh what's going on here? Like, um, if you if you had to, I I I know you played this game and you might know what he's going to do, which is fine. I I don't get it. that's totally fine. That's a cheat sheet for you, but I want you to tell me what you think. Is the situation in the game right now? What should be a concern for you, and what? How can you economy this? And I'll, I'll I want you to be thorough, okay? Because this is theory. This is your practice for theory. And after you give me an answer, I will give you my answer. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's start with the the barracks. So there's a barracks, and it's way in the back, and it has the um the not the reactor, but the tech lab. So I'm I'm assuming. He wants to go with some sort of upgrade on on that, right? Unless he's making marauders, but that would be kind of early to do. Maybe doing upgrades. Um, the the armory. I think you had an armory down there. Is it an armory or a, yeah? Yep. That's kind of interesting that it's so early. Um, but maybe he's trying to do something with um, again, like it would be upgrades, obviously. But or isn't armory vehicle upgrades, right? Uh, yes so it's not right so it wouldn't be so that's kind of interesting um he has a starport in it does a starport have a tech lab on it mm -hmm. so um that could be um like maybe like banshees it could, it could be like a like a weird banshee maneuver type thing um yeah and then he has double gas which would correlate with more of that tech right so like you take the double gas if you're trying to go for like an air thing sure um that would be my first read in the, that would be what i would think so i'd be like okay he's maybe going for some type of weird air thing okay and now i have another question for you what okay. are you gonna what what's your what's your choice now on your base what are you gonna do now well i feel like i'm at this point, I would I looking at that and looking at this, I would I would say that I'm probably ahead, base wise and and supply wise because he he's only on the two and it looks like he doesn't have that many buildings. I would think that Queens and I, there's uh, the static D is such a people argue about it a lot, but like potentially add add a a spore. Uh, is it, yeah a spore crawler yeah spore crawler is the anti air one spore crawler yeah so mm -hmm. maybe maybe a spore in each base and an extra queen or two okay and then what's your what's going to be the, just, just queens are you going to make zerglings with this you're going to make roaches with this as well I I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to tell you a good answer to that I guess I would I would probably just continue to do my roach thing okay so I have a qu new question for you to give okay. you an answer to that when do you think okay. this is going to attack you. Or do you think it's going to attack um, you at all? Well, how do you feel about what's... What, when is he planning on doing a push or something like that? When do you think that is? Well, that's tough because I, I don't and I don't think... Right now, my Overlord is kind of seeing a lot of space. I don't... There, there might be more buildings, but if this is just all he has right now, I feel like that's kind of a unique path to go for. So I feel like he's going to do some sort of timing with, like, a, with, with air. But I also okay. don't... I don't know how upgrades work really with melee or air but okay. there's going to be at least a couple of minutes on that right like he's not it'd be weird to build an armory and then just go right into banshees and not get an upgrade for it right so you sure. probably want to match them um so mm -hmm. let's say six minutes okay so okay so if let's just under that assumption if you have six minutes 
It, it, like at mm -hmm. six at six minutes, sorry, not you don't have six minutes, but at six minutes, if he's gonna do a timing yeah. attack, you have that means you have a minute fifty or like a minute forty nine to prepare. Mm -hmm. And in that minute forty nine to prepare, how would you think to yourself, okay, I can do this and that'll be my ideal response? Just I want you to just lay it out for me. This is the last thing I'll ask you. I know I'm putting you on the spot constantly here, but no, I, you totally really right. have to think about this shit though. Um, yeah, no, you don't definitely do. I would I would do I would do a spore in each base. Okay. I would when, do well, a sorry. Of, are you when are you gonna do? It? Are you gonna do it right now or when are you gonna do it? Oh man. Um, four forty-five. Four four. A, did you say four forty-five? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Four forty-five. Yeah. Four okay. Forty-five. I would do a spore in each base. I would do okay. a round of queens. Um, and then, uh, I don't know if I would drone or take a fourth because he still is only on two bases. So I would say drone up the third. Okay. And maybe you just build a, a safety net of Zerglings. I think I already have eight, and I feel like you that's have eight, not yeah. terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's, that's probably what I, would, what I would do. I would drone up the third <coughs> and maybe make some more Zerglings and then the spores and a round of queens. Okay. Uh, so I would say your odds of defending this would be... My guess would be... I'll tell you what I think, okay? And I'll give you a percentage okay. of what I think, how I think you would defend. Okay. I think your odds of living in a successful way with the defense you've given yourself would be probably around 30%. And That's not great. let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. So I, I think your spore reaction is totally fine. I think the fact right. that... You, the, yes, I agree. You should make spore. And the fact that you put it at a late enough number, that would be okay. I'm on board with it. Now, the reason why I think your spores was fine is because he's not actually researching Cloak yet. If he was researching Cloak a little faster, I'd say you might want to take your spores a little bit quicker, like maybe around like 425 to 430, just because okay. Cloak could finish a lot faster. If he rushed that shit, like ASAP, he could get Cloak by um, like sub five minutes, and you definitely don't want to ha not have spores uh, sure. there. So your spore timing, great, wonderful. I loved it. Uh, the fact that you want to make more queens, I like that idea as well. Those are the best two things about your defense. The fact that you want to drone your third base, also mostly fine. Um, now, the one thing I think you would need to not die here is I think you would need, like, if you're only, like, you need, like, even more queens than one more round, or you would need, like, a spine crawler. Because, now, let me tell you why. So... That, that's all you would need to change, or you would need to make a roach warren, like, now, and then make probably, like, seven roaches or something, or six roaches, so that when he shows up in a little bit, uh, that you're safe. Now, your timing, your your quota for six minutes that he's going to attack you, I would say that might be a little bit late. I think he might attack you more towards, like, 530, uh, or, like, maybe in, like, 520, but, so, like, might be a little bit late on your defense there. Like, I don't, basically, what I'm going to say is I don't think this is going to be an air-only attack. I think it's going to be a Hellbat timing. And now, let oh. me tell you why. And it'll be a hybrid Hellbat timing. So, okay. now I'll give you my read on this, okay? Okay. So, now, this Terran player, you scouted earlier that he expanded. You have no vision if he does or does not have a third base. But I would say odds are low that he doesn't... Uh, that he doesn't... Or, sorry, I'm saying this weird. Odds are low for Nobody no third. third base. Yeah, there's no third here, probably. Yeah. I'm, I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the reason why is because yeah, double gas is relevant. It's more expensive to afford heavy mineral shit when you're going double gas earlier. Armory is relevant. You don't normally take an armory this fast unless you're going to go Hellbats because this allows for Hellbat transformation. It, like, enables it. Uh, the armory... Right. It makes yeah, okay. The armory does three things. It not only gives you upgrades for all vehicles, which is standard, it also unlocks, like... With upgrades, it also unlocks your bio upgrades to go beyond 1-1. One, one. So now this unlocks your 2-2-3-3 three, three, three for bio. But this is way too early for upgrades, like you said. The, you, you acknowledge that. That's very good that you acknowledge that. The odds of him getting upgrades off this thing right away are super low. Uh, or using it for any reason of upgrades. But the one thing this does do is it allows you to get... Uh, like I said, it allows your Hellbats to transform into Hellbats. And it also allows your Widow Mines to stay permanently cloaked when they're underground. So, oh, okay. the, yeah, the armor, if you don't have an armory, a Widow Mine will shoot its shot and it'll be revealed underground when it's burrowed. But if you do have an armory, it'll just stay cloaked. So, do you, have to, do you have to research that? No, you don't. You have to research what? Drilling Claws, which makes them burrow faster, which this unlocks the upgrade for Drilling Claws. But 
the odds of him having a, re a tech lab on the on the factory are very low and i guarantee there's a factory right here with a reactor right there and i guarantee this barracks was started right there and it made a reactor and then he floated it over and he made a tech lab for the for the starport and then he floated it over again and made a tech lab for the barracks so he made okay. three add-ons with this thing right here he made a reactor, then he made tech lab, lift it off and put a fact or a starboard on it, and then he made another tech lab here. It's most likely what his build looks like it was. And what I think this is all for is there's gonna be most likely Hellions made here. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to go for Widow Mines if you're not gonna pair it with Medivacs. Because you you can drop in, boost in, drop the mineral line, shit like that. That's way more effective than just walking to the front door and putting Widow Mines on the outside. That does that's just not very great. So odds of it being Hellions are really high. Odds of it turning into Hellbats are really high because of this armory. Odds of it being Marauders are... Uh, he's making a Marine too, right? But odds of it being Marauders with a tech lab here would be really high because it makes sense. And this should be concussive shells. So I would... Because he wants what he wants to do, what a general standard Hellbat push kind of does, is it pushes you with a snare so that Hellbats can actually get on top of the units that are getting snared by the Marauder and just fucking roast them. Because Marauder and Hellbat do a lot of damage together, and they're also kind of tanky together. So okay. this looks like a this looks like a Hellbat timing, uh, and then this could either be a Raven or it would most likely be Banshee. The Raven is actually a tool you could use because you could throw it on auto turret, and you could kill all the creep of Zerg. It would it would be more of a control based Hellbat timing, I would say. But it's okay. rare. I would say it's not it's more it's not as common. Uh, the fact that he has a Banshee or a, a tech lab here would make more sense that he would go for a Banshee. And he can't go for a BC with this because it's not a fusion core, it's an armory. Do you think practicing what we're doing, this theory crafting, because I think it's really important, because I think you're going to have to learn it somewhere down the road, right? Because uh -huh. you, 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 you basically teach the fundamentals where it's like, hey, you build upkeep, you, this is how you do I, th I think I know where you're going with this question. Okay. Like, wh what order, like, should I'm, I be focusing on this? I'm going to, I, I tell on... you right now, in my opinion, we're doing a master's level coaching lesson. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because okay, and, and, uh, because we, I mean, like I did say in the e when we we're emailing and stuff, I do not mind to coach you however you want to be coached. That's totally fine, right. and I, I will give you my recommendation. And I think macro is by far what you should what you should be focusing on in Platinum League. Okay. But okay. yeah, if we do theory crafting like this, this is how I would coach someone in Masters League or maybe even GM. Really? Okay, but, that's yeah. good to know. Okay, so so kind of like so so this stuff's important, but not as important right now or as relevant as me just making safety roaches and nailing yeah. down my drones it, and nailing th down yeah that's why that's why i referenced the power level of going into the mid game and like having one decision seem like it's the same as the other one but it's not like okay. that changes everything and you have to understand that stuff okay is there is there then a basic or a basis where we can work with my the macro is there like a i know it's not like a one size fits all thing that would be too easy but like in your videos, like I said, you, you kind of just throw up a base and take a new one, throw up a base, take a new one, and then every so often you're like, oh, I should build some more units. Um, is, is that kind of the best way to go about doing it? Like, should I just be doing that then? Uh, yeah. Does that make uh, sense? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know. Like, you're trying to figure out, like, when you should be doing things. And yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying to find a good a good roadmap of how I can get more. Right now, and in going into Diamond, like, going deeper into Diamond League, it really is about just uh, having a, like efficiency in your build. It's not really like, oh, I need to play off my opponent as much in the lower leagues. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I I could play someone in bronze. I could play someone in silver. I could play someone in plat. I could play someone in fucking uh, gold. Those four leagues. And I could win blindfolded as long as I... like I, I could have the entire map blacked out. I couldn't see shit down the ramp. Let's just say that. I never saw anything. Well, let's say there was like an X, like a red X on the minimap saying that's that's where his bases are. Like these are the available mineral lines on the map or something like that. I could win the game okay. playing like that if I just had good macro. Like legit, I don't need to see anything. I'm just like, okay, we're just playing efficient. And I'm just going to attack him with shit randomly. I'm not going to A-move it. not going to micro anything. Not even going to know what his composition is. I'm just going to make a, a standard versatile composition of like Roach Hydra. And then we'll okay. call it a day. And you would win playing okay. like that because your macro is good enough. Because everybody in lower leagues has fucked up macro. Like, they've really, it's not, it, like, there's zero. It's not even like, oh, it's like half people. It's fucking zero people have good macro in low leagues. Zero. And this includes okay. Diamond League. This also okay. kind of includes Masters League, is, believe it or not. Uh, the reason why that is, is because uh, people Diamond Plus 
can have decent macro, okay? They have decent macro. Okay. Uh, like Ma Diamond and Masters have decent macro. People in Platinum and Below have horrible macro. So people in, pl in Platinum and Below will just straight up fall behind for no reason. Like nothing's happening on either side. And people in Platinum and Below will just make inefficient ways of doing things. And they'll fall behind simply in a macro race. But people in Diamond Plus, what happens to them and it, it happens more severely to the lower in that spectrum you go. So like when you go to Diamond, it's more severe than it is in Masters. But people in Diamond Plus, what happens to them is they fall behind the second they're distracted. It's like, oh, Reapers in my base. Oh, fuck. Okay, uh, now I'm supply blocked. I forgot an Overlord. I forgot to make drones. I forgot to do this. I didn't make a Creep Tumor. I didn't inject my base. I forgot my Queen. I didn't make my third base. It's like shit just fucking flies out of the window when they get distracted. But if they don't get distracted, they can somewhat keep up. Okay. So this is shit that I like, there's no way to give you an answer to fix that other than you just need to learn it. You need to experience it and get through it and get it, get it done. And then you'll get more acquired to it because how I, many, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, how many <coughs> realistically, and again, I don't mind it taking a long time. I don't mind playing uh -huh. a thousand or whatever games. But how many games do you think the average person plays before they kind of are like, oh, my macro is because I feel like I've, I've, I don't know if it, I don't know the normal person. Who would think of. I don't know if they're just like, oh, this is a fun game. They get into it and they drink a drink and they play. Or if they're like watching the videos and they're so chewing all I, I can, or... I can give you an answer to this. And this is as real okay. of an answer as I can give you. It's okay. going to be, it's multiple answers because I can't just give you one. I can't just give you a number. Right. So if you're the kind of person that does what we're doing right now, and let's say you don't do it with me all the time, let's say you have a friend who's like Master's League who talks to you like this as well, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how I see the game, and this is what I think, and then you get perspective, and then so you talk to someone else, and this, they're like, this is how I see the game, and this is what I think, and you get more perspective. If you constantly get perspective from people who are better than you, and you're trying to improve the game, and you really open your mind up to trying to understand the game while you learn the game, not just learning how a build order works, but you learn how to actually play the game to where when the, cause every game has a sense of freestyle. And if you actually know what you're doing in freestyle and you have a plan and you can execute that plan based on logical things, you're way better. But <coughs> if you ha have no actual understanding of the game and you only understand a build order, what happens to you then is the second you get derailed or you get thrown off your build a little bit, you fucking fall apart. Because you're like, I'm, I don't know what I'm right. doing beyond the build order. Right. So I'm confused now. And then you just make horrible choices and throw the game. Uh, I so, feel like I'm in that camp right now sure, a little sure, bit. Where sure. like, you know, where I'm trying to follow the, yeah. Uh-huh. No, so like, it, what I'm saying is, is if you theorycraft a lot and you talk to people who are good at the game and you get ideas from them, I would say you would 500 games and you would be like, you'd be like, wow, I feel like a totally different player. Uh, if you are someone who just does it on your own and you really try to learn, you try to like understand the shit on your own, maybe like anywhere between the range of like 1,000 to 3,000 games of be, just playing by yourself, just trying to like scratch your head and be like, what needs to change here? And then like you, you, you try it 17 different times and you're like, okay, this is enough of a sample size that I feel like I'm starting to understand this one situation out of 17,000 situations, right? Like, like there's, again, there's a lot of situations where a lot of things are different in every game because it's like you could have two builders be exactly the same, but in one game, the drone count to the worker to the SCV count is 10 plus drones in that situation. And then another game, it's 10 negative drones. And that's a totally different situation. And now it's totally different examples and totally different spectrum of what needs to happen there. But you don't even know that all the time. And now you got to figure out how do I figure that out in the first place? Like it's these things matter. And it changes, it changes it constantly. So if you're doing it by yourself, I'd say a few thousand games and you're probably going to start feeling like you're improving a little bit. And that's okay. if you think about it. And if you don't right. think about it and you're like, I don't know, I'm just playing the game and I'm just going to do the build order and not actually open my brain to theory crafting and like trying to actually understand what is the fuck is happening here. Uh, infinity. Until you quit. <laughs> right. Literally, you'll get people until that are like, I am forever <laughs> platinum or I am forever diamond. And I've played fucking 16,000 games and I haven't ever been promoted out of diamond. I just can't get out of this fucking league because it's just for, it's impossible. And it, those people are usually the kind of people that go into a game and they go, okay, I'm doing this fucking Ling Bane Hydra build and I, that's just what's going to happen. And then they do the same choice every single time. And then they might not realize that like the second a particular thing happens in the game, 
It could be a tech-based thing by, from your opponent where it's composition. It could be a harass-based thing where they get, take more damage than they should have. It could be all these kinds of things, but they just go, you know what? Stick into the plan. I don't give a fuck. We're just doing it. And then they, they lose because they just get outpaced and then someone kills them. Like, to give you an example, this literally happens in GM as well. Like, I genuinely played somebody yesterday on stream. I'm not going to say his name, but I played him yesterday on stream. He's a Protoss player. And his playstyle is charge lot aggression. It's not like a two base charge lot all in. It's just expansions with charge lot aggression. It's like run buys and stuff like that. Yeah, he just constantly throws zealots yeah. on the okay. both sides of the map over and over and over and over okay. and over and over. And that okay. playstyle only works if you have economy lead. It only works if you have economy lead. It does not make any fucking sense to do that when you're behind. And he kept doing it the whole game. He like he did a timing attack. It failed. I completely destroyed it. And then I was ahead economically, like by I like the situation was like I was on like seventy drones and he was on like forty seven probes, and he just kept fucking sending zealots at me. And all they did was it's like six zealots run across the map, die. Four more zealots run across the map on the other side, die. He sends another eight zealots, four by four on two sides, die, die. He and he sent out like twenty four zealots over the course of like three minutes and they all died. And then he just kept throwing supply away. And it's like, I don't know what the fuck you think this is accomplishing right now, but this is not the time sure. to fucking do charge that run buys not, when you're behind like right. that. And people, that's because that dude does not understand what the fuck the tempo of the game is. And instead, he's just doing a build order. Got so it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, he's, he's actually like Masters 1 GM though. So he's good enough at execution to make it win more than it loses to get to that level. True. Even though he okay. genuinely does not understand the game. Which is why I said that this conversation we're having is like a masters to GM level conversation, because gotcha. you don't even need to know this shit to get GM at this game. Oh, okay. That's but good to know. So I, it yeah, makes me fix my priorities a little bit. It, it, I'm okay. telling you right now, you could be a fucking monkey that drools on the keyboard, and you just are fast, okay. and you could be GM. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like I'm not even fucking kidding you, dude. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of brainlit GMs out there. I'm I'm dead serious. Okay. Deal. It's it's really about your efficiency. It's it's the main thing. So like, um, we'll just go through this game pretty fast now, okay? It just we'll, okay. We'll, I'll tell you what I think you should be doing. I'll give you a quick okay. rundown. So here Deal. comes some Hillians. This is gonna be Hellbats. Uh, absolutely, right now you should be uh, getting your, your the fact that you have no creep here is the biggest fuck up of all. By far, okay. no creep means you can't even defend this properly. Okay. You can't transfuse your queens on creep. You can't even kite uh, Hellbats with no creep. You can't move into position when Hellions relocate without creep. You can't do shit without creep here. So creep is basically all the drones you're making is essentially you're you're making them and this is a garbage disposal and you're throwing them in there right now. Uh, you just it's gonna be like just fucking fire death over here in a second. Okay. Uh, sure. And then there's a very high chance your third will die because Hellbats can absolutely roast a fucking hatchery like no time at all. Okay. Uh, so the second thing you're fucking up is you're not injecting your main, or, you're, or you are injecting your main, but you're not injecting your natural. Also, this inject is late, because you've, you're only like, a, maybe like 35%, 40% of the way into that inject, and you already have enough for another one, which means you've actually missed, like this should be done now, and there should be another one going on fresh. So this, okay. this means you're 16 seconds behind on the inject in your main. And okay. you're a full inject behind on, you're, you're, you're a, now, you know, 29 seconds behind of an inject on your natural, if you were to start it now, because it's your, you haven't even started it. And then you haven't okay. even started one period on your third base. Okay. So focus that's, on that stuff, not his base. This is so much more important than okay. strategy talk. Uh, it really okay. is. Because, like, okay. the strategy talk comes really into, like, the whole theory crafting thing. That comes into play once this is perfect. Oh, and this okay. is this is exactly... Because, like, if you can just do this flawlessly every game and this is never a variant, then strategy makes more sense. Because okay. this is th this variant is no longer applicable, but if this is a variant where sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad for no reason other than you're just playing good or playing bad that game, and dude, like it's like oh well, sometimes I just fuck up my macro. If that's still the case, that can't be the case to actually incorporate strategy because now this changes strategy. You are now effectively with nothing, ha no units have died yet. You are behind. Sure. This, this this basically to say to say it like this. If you were having like Cyril, okay? Let's just talk about Cyril for two seconds here. Let's say Cyril was in this game right now and he took over. 
it would be Serral would feel like these Hellions that are coming across the map right now, this is the position that he would be in if he had already lost like six creep tumors to scans and harassment, and he also lost like ten drones on his bitter line. And like that's where he's starting from. Oh, that, okay. Because if if he was playing this game from the start, he would be at like fifty five drones right now, and he would have creep all the way out to like there and all the way out to like there probably. Okay. What do you think are the fundamental things or important, just a couple key things that are really important when you're like in plat trying to get that, like it creep injects and spend money? Do you think just like focusing on that, like really hardcore is something that would just be really helpful or like... The, the, the biggest thing I can tell you is you should think about energy and you should think about larva. And the, to explain that, every single time your queen as 25 energy you should either be injecting or spawning larva or uh, uh i said the same thing twice you should be creep spreading or injecting uh sure. uh yeah either one of those should be happening you should not ever think to yourself i have 52 energy because i want to have 52 energy don't think like that you should think oh i have 25 and then you did the, there's only one thing that should go through your brain when you have 25 energy for the inject side you just fucking inject if it's ready to go and your queen's there, you inject it the second you have 25. If you're on point, you're never missing a second of inject. That's great. It means you're having maximum larva. When it comes to creep, though, the only thing that should go through your brain when you make a creep tumor is, is it safe to make this right now? So I would never be like, oh, yeah, there's four hellions right here and they're driving right at you. Make a creep tumor. It'll just, they'll just kill it, right? And then it's like, well, that was a waste. But the second you think you're safe to make it, you immediately make it. And if you think you're safe as you have the energy to make it, you make it immediately. Because every second that goes by, you're wasting time on creep if you don't use it. If you, okay. if you, and if you don't spread it, you're wasting time on creep. That is one thing that should go through your brain when it comes to efficiency. And that's energy based on queens. This okay. is massive for macro. The okay. second thing that should go through your brain very, very often and consistently with Zerg is larva. You should be thinking to yourself, you should understand these numbers. And if you don't, you should memorize this. This is so important. There is, you get six larva a minute, two different ways if you're playing perfect, which means you ultimately oh, get 30, or, uh, yeah. sorry, I just got sub two and it just distracted me. Um, got to use the larva. You get, you get six larva every minute in two different ways, which means in total, you get 12 larva in, in total throughout a minute if you're perfectly playing. And then what that comes from is if you inject perfectly, you're injecting two times a minute and you're getting six larva from those two injects because it's three larva per inject and three times two is six. Another way you get larva is every 10 seconds, you generate a larva just straight up out of the hatchery. It just spawns and it becomes into existence. Right. And the thing that fucks up both of those that you need to not, you need to be on top of this and you need to be on top of this multiplied by how many hatcheries you have. So it's easy as fuck when you have one hatchery. It becomes a little more challenging when you have two, more challenging when you have three, more challenging when you have four, even more challenging when you have macro hatches, even more challenging when you have another base. Like you need to be on top of this shit. And the only the only excuse to not be perfect on this is when you're maxed out because you then can't spend your larva. But you still need to be good at injecting, but you can kind of be okay on not spending because you're maxed. But then the second you're not maxed, immediately be on top of it again. But with the, with the larva spawn one, if you have three larva on a hatchery, it no longer spawns larva. So like that 10 second interval timer where it's like larva, larva, larva every 10 seconds, it just stops, it, it goes on pause. And okay. it doesn't like queue it up to where it's like ready to spawn it out the second you spend it. It it stops at zero. So like if you have three larva there, it goes, it's just now stuck at zero because it can't do it anymore. And then you can't make the lar you can't generate the larva, which means you're, you're effectively losing the unit. Okay, that's the whole thing. Yeah, okay, it's so, it's fucking massive. Yeah. Okay, so if the build necessarily isn't, if it's, it's just efficiency because you always hammer in your videos. Like, oh, it is efficiency, one hundred percent. Um, what is or is there a simple way to do like an efficient? Like for example, you were like, if I didn't use the beat things really. I mean, I have, I have, I have them, but I haven't really used them. And you were saying like that's not really like helpful the, to me. This is I I, I want to answer your question. And this is the be the best way I can answer your question, because there's I wish I, I wish I could just like this is the matrix I could shove a fucking spike into your head and you're like I know macro and you're like fuck yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? But you can't do that. It's real. It's reality, unfortunately. 
but all you need to do is your fucking hand needs to get muscle memory into it. That is the biggest tip I can give you. There is a reason why whenever uh, someone watches a pro gamer at this game, they're like, why are their hands moving so fast? Like, nothing's even going on right now, yet they're fucking spazzing out all over their hatchery and their command center. Right. And they're just, like, playing 400 APM when they have 12 workers. Like, it seems pointless, right? Right. It's because they're not even using their brain to do that. It is literally like dribbling a basketball for a, a NBA player. Like, they don't think actively, okay, dribble, dribble, oh. dribble, dribble. They just fucking do okay. it because it's just what they do. It's just, it's, it's, it's built into their fucking DNA at this point. It's like breathing for any normal human being. You don't think inhale, exhale, unless you're having a panic attack, right? Like it's right. Like you don't. This, it, these are things you don't think about. It's automated, so you need to make okay. macro automated. You need to do okay. it so much, and you need to you need to actively make it automated. But once it becomes automated, it needs to remain automated. So like you need to literally be like, like your hatchery is five, which is great. It's mine is. But I literally, while I'm like I'm reading chat in my games when I'm like streaming. Yeah. And I'm going 5SD, 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 5SD. I'm, I'm not even... I'm doing it as fast as I'm saying it. I'm doing it, like, every fucking half a second. And the reason why I'm doing it so often is because... It's not because I'm, I'm trying to make that many drones. And that's how... I think that's how many drones are there. It's because I, I'm trying to catch the larva every time it spawns. And I'm not using my brain to think about that. My hand is doing it. Do you think working with like pl playing against AI would be a great way to, to establish that? If you want an honest, I, sorry, yeah, keep going. Honest opinion. I, no, I would no, say no, I would yeah, yeah. I would say no. I would be like oh, okay. no, and the, because the reason why is because I think conditioning is important when it comes to training for something, and I think AI is not going to push you like a real player would. I think AI does not understand the concept of Reaper harass. I think AI does not understand the concept of Hillian harass. The AI is like a dumbass where they'll be like make a random blob of shit and just a move into death and then okay. and then it's like you have n nothing distracting you for the next fucking you know three minutes of the game and you're just having super smooth sailing macro again this is exactly what i'm talking about when i was talking about how a diamond player and a master's player kind of fall apart where when nothing happens to them they play fine but as soon as something happens they just fucking play slow as shit and they miss everything and they, they start fucking having these speed bumps everywhere and it's like shit is just hitting the fan okay so I think I think just forcing yourself to get used to it and live ex live execution live play is the best way you can prepare for live play. Just put okay. yourself throw yourself into the fire and just fucking learn to embrace it. Okay. Fire check. Yeah, like you just got to take it and you'll that'll make you such a stronger player. Okay. Because I'm telling you right now, this is one thing that you have to realize. There there I want you to visualize like close your eyes and I want you to visualize something. This is what your life is as Zerg from now on. Okay. I want you to think about like a gym. And I want you to think about 10 really buff guys that they all don't have their shirt on and they're sweating. And they're like, they're like Mike Tyson level buff, okay? Like they're, they're, they're punching the fuck out of that punching bag. And each one of them, they're like, they're punching it so hard that it like, like it slams into the ceiling and then comes back down. And now I want you to realize that you as a Zerg player are that punching bag. And the Terrans and Protosses are the, the buff guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You have to yeah, realize... Well, I've, you, I've, you're, I've, yeah. Your I've, ass is going to get destroyed repeatedly. You have to, that's your life as Zerg now, dude. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, because it's the most... Isn't it the most reactive race? Oh, it is. Like... And you got to realize, as Zerg, you're going to react to getting your butt fucked every single game and trying to come out of that ahead. Every time. That's It's your life. That is what you're going to grow into. It's just how it goes. Okay. <laughs> you're never you're yeah. never going to be a Zerg player and go, I have control here. You always okay. do not have control. You always get shit thrown at you, and you have to just absorb it as best you can. Be the punching bag that just absorbs those hits and comes right back to ground zero, and you're back to where you were. Okay. And then your chance... But the thing about Zerg that's beautiful is you it's like you're a, you're a you're a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly and you evolve and suddenly a rotation happens where you're done making drones and now you're ready to make army and then every single player that tried to fuck you over in the early game if they failed you just annihilate them the rest of the game that's yeah. generally speaking zerg life when you macro okay okay yep that's what you gotta get used to so don't that's why I want you to get used to taking fucking hits in the face repeatedly because that's the only way you're going to be able to take hits in the face. Like it, that's that is literally every game for you if you macro. You have to just okay. weather the hits and then 
do a good enough job to like come out ahead every time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Deal. Um. But yeah. Uh. We can. Uh. I can keep going with this one though, because we we haven't even got through this. We with so much theory, so much talking about it. But Terran pokes you with aliens, right? Yeah. And uh, he backs off. This is lucky for you because you still have no yeah. creep here, and he could easily yeah. have killed this. Mm -mm. All right, so Marine push server lord back. That's fine. You have a lot of lings. This is scary because the idea if you made hellbats here if this guy I don't know why this guy it literally went armory and he's pushing you with hellions right now If he just walked into here with hellbats your lings would be dead in half a second But if you like if he just loses these hellions Like that it Makes no sense uh, So this guy is making his own problems <laughs> like he, like, I'm not even shitting you. He could have killed your base. With the rest of us. Yeah, okay, he could have. Yeah. He could have just killed your base if he just made hellbats. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So th that right there, though, because that failed for him, I would say right now, this is the perfect moment for you to want to get a scout again. Like, you could send a zergling to the front of his base, like run up and down the ramp and see what the hell's going on the ramp. You could have an overlord go through his main again around six minutes and find out is there a third command center or not and the fact that there is not this would not be the time to saturate your fourth base realistically i would say this is the time to make whatever the fuck you're going to make and you're going for roaches roach one's a bit late i would say probably wanted to make this yeah. a little bit faster but yeah. realistically having like you could totally take another base right now and i would absolutely always recommend taking a macro hatch if you can't find yourself staying under a thousand minerals like just okay. take a macro hatch because it, it's yeah. That that's a lot of money for sure. Okay. Um. And then, you know, like, see, like what I'm talking. Like, this is macro right here. So, like, I want you to think about this as well, and I want you to understand that this is why macro is something you never stop working on. When you have twelve workers, it's easy to macro because you have twelve yeah. workers, and money is very. It's like it's like it's like macro on super 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 slow speed. Yeah. But when you have 50 workers, macro gets a little bit more challenging. When you have 60 workers, it's more challenging even then. When you have 70 workers, it's even more challenging. When you have 80 workers, it's even more challenging. And based on what your composition you're going for is, it's even more challenging then. So if you're doing a zergling based build, which is the cheapest unit to make with the with an expensive economy which is like a lot of drones on minerals <coughs> builds like that are the hardest builds to macro properly with zerg which is why i don't teach people how to do speedling builds in early game because it's the most challenging way to macro for zerg it's the most larva expensive mineral cheap unit style that requires the most pristine macro to make effective so would you scrap what I did at the start of like 16, 18 gas? hundred percent, yeah. 18. I would say okay. just go back to B to GM. Uh, that's why that's why I referenced all this shit earlier on. Just we, but again, I didn't want to. I didn't want to dive heavily into the into like, oh, this is another macro lesson because you're like, okay, bro, I don't want to do macro. I want to do theory. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we can do no, that. That's I fine. I get that. I get that. Okay. But okay, that's fair. Yeah, but I, uh, it, yeah, it's. It, I'm telling you right now, it, theory matters to you one percent, and macro matters to you ninety nine percent for sure. Like, in your macro is definitely not pristine. Um, okay. Like, two queens having four injects worth of energy plus an excess of 10. 64 plus 56. Like, this is 110 energy in the main for a hatchery that's not injected. It's fucking brutal. You have okay. uh, 44 energy on a hatchery that's finishing an inject here pretty soon. But that alone shows you that... I don't even know if you've queued up an inject at all on this hatchery before this. But that's off. This queen right now should be at, like... 21 or like 20 if you're doing perfect because the way it works is as an eject pops off the hatchery you will be getting 25 right then like you'll, you'll, you'll actually you'll probably go a little bit faster than what the energy takes because it's actually 29 seconds for the timer of it and you don't generate 25 energy in 29 seconds you'll probably generate like 27 energy or like 26 energy in 25 seconds or in 20 sorry in 29 seconds point i'm trying to make is you'll slowly get more energy than what you spend on a hatchery if you have flawless injects Oh, okay. Like, it's... Um, but, yeah, 44 is a lot. 
Um, okay. they, like, and no one has flawless injects the entire game unless you're like a pro gamer. So, but you could like people in GM even sometimes fuck that up. It, it's just something you need to work on always, and it gets more challenging to work on it the higher the economy gets because you have more shit to keep in touch to keep track of and everything. And then obviously, there's a oh. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go. Do you think there's a? How do I word it? Like um. Very completely spacing. Do you think there's a way that you learn to macro the the bet? Like for example, memory. It's it's it's, focus... it's it's experience and memory. Okay. Like I didn't know if it's like do you just focus on just like injects for like a week and then after that you focus <clears throat> no. on. No, I I I don't oh. think so. So like. I don't. I honestly think that doing targeted training is not good for StarCraft Two because you're. I think targeted training is. All, I. I th okay. So let me say it like this: There is a time when targeted training is fine, but it has nothing to do with evolving as a player up to like a master's level player. I think targeted training is only okay when you're like targeting a strategy. If you're like, okay, I have a really good Terran teammate, and I want him to help me deal with a certain type of build. And I want him to like rush me repeatedly, and I want to get really good at dealing with rushes. Just keep rushing me. I think that's fine. But here's why I, I think targeted training overall is shit. Okay. You are playing ladder, and ladder okay. is chaos. Ladder is randomness. Ladder is you don't know who the fuck you're going to get, you don't know what MMR they're going to be, and you don't know what build they're going to do, and you don't know what race they're going to be. It's chaos. It's all question mark, and you have to figure it out every single game. And a big part of getting better at StarCraft 2, genuinely getting better at this game, is ad adapting to situations. Learning how to react and deal with situations on the fly all the time. If you can't do that because you constantly target your training and you always make things uh, non variableistic it's always like very static, very, very like targeted training, you will very slowly develop your adaptation level of skill. Like you, you just won't evolve that very fast. Like that'll only okay. that'll that'll always make it feel like you always have struggle. You struggle to deal with shit, in my opinion, because you just you can't you can't be like, hey, opponent, no rush, ten minutes, okay? I'm I, I'm doing macro, so don't fucking rush I mean, I me. Try to do that, but they never listen. Yeah, and then they're like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, you're doing targeted training, and you want to do in-game sure. stuff, okay? Sure, that's fine. Like that's <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Sure, um, sure. So they're going to do whatever the fuck they want, and you have to be able to deal with that. Um, okay. So I think what you need to do is you need to just do your best every single game as to trying to handle everything constantly the entire time, and that is the fastest way you improve as a player. Because if you don't do that, and someone realizes you have a weakness, they will exploit that. Like, And I'm not going to lie. Most people aren't going to be this intelligent throughout most of your experience, but you will eventually get to a point where indirectly somebody will exploit your weakness because they have a playstyle that just doesn't match up well to you with yours like let's say you're weak yeah. at dealing with aggression and you play against someone who fucking loves aggression and you're like well i didn't really i don't want him to do this because this is not what this is not you know i'm trying to do like right. a particular drone thing and he's just not allowing me to do that and it's really fucking with not, my, yeah. my mood here okay right Okay. Uh, yeah, like I think as Zerg, you just gotta learn how to take the hits and just fucking play perfect regardless. Uh, okay. And the, again, the best way you can do that is just with experience. And go back, always think about what I said, the like ten minutes ago. Energy spending, what what it actually is represents perfect energy spending with the injects and the in the creep tumors, and then also larva spending. If you understand those two things and you actually do them perfect. Automatically, you're going to be Masters League. Like, I'm not even shitting you. If you just okay. get good at that, you could... I, I, I'm telling you right now, I could play Diamond League, and someone from chat in my stream could be like, all right, Vibe, you have to do this unit composition. It could be fucking anything. It could be Broodlords. It could be fucking uh, only Zerglings. It could be uh, fucking only Roaches. It could be only Hydras. It could actually be only Queens. And... Obviously, there's going to be creative ways we can make that work, but I do think I could actually beat a lot of people in Diamond League simply because those two things are fucking solid for me. I have good larva spending, and I have good creep. Okay. Okay. 
do so i'll get i'll get away from i'll, I'll do the the bronson gm style i think I mean, yeah, and I, I want you to have fun with the game, right? Like, if you want to explore other shit, by all means, you totally can. But I just want you to know that the beta GM, the reason why I made it the way it is, it's the easiest path of least resistance And when it comes to getting those two things pristine. Roach Hydra is so fucking easy in terms of spending and larva, and also in terms of unit management. Like, it's literally fucking... It's expensive on your resources to the point to where you don't need mass macro hatches and perfect fucking flawless injects. Even if you did have those, though, it would help. But it's more forgiving if you don't because it's just more expensive units. And it's also units that you don't need to be harassing with the entire time because they scale relatively well as long as you can macro them out quickly and do a timing attack. But a unit okay. like a Zergling is a unit that sucks ass if you do nothing with it. And then also, it's expensive on the larva which means you have to have flawless fucking larva usage gotcha okay that makes sense yeah it's way harder to do zergling builds than it is to do fucking roach builds okay i'll, I'll do i'll start doing the roach i mean because yeah i wasn't doing it for like flavor purposes i was just like oh these guys tack Shit. yeah and there there's definitely a lot of power to zergling builds like i actually think zergling builds overall are better than roach builds it's just well, harder to execute. Zerg is based off of, right? Like that's kind of like their style, right? Like counterattacking and things like that. Yeah, but then uh, again, that's probably way later on. Like, but again, yeah, you can only counterattack if you have actually genuine good macro to be able to set it up <laughs> yeah, in a situation yeah. where a counterattack would make sense. If you can attack, because yeah. because a counter a proper counterattack is not a base trade. A proper counterattack is launching an attack at your opponent's economy and fucking their economy up while still having enough units to withstand their push. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, so if you like if you're just behind on units and you're like, well if he pushes me, I fucking die. That's not right. that's not a situation where you want to be like proud of yourself and be like, that's good macro. Right. That's like shit went yeah. wrong this game somehow and right. I need to fix that. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh yeah. But we've been talking a lot about stuff like but do you have any questions about anything right now? No, I mean I it's it's this it's kind of the the same just uh, we've done a couple lessons and i i've kind of switched different races and i think that's kind of also been hard sure um, but uh yeah it's just, it's just that that hand-eye coordination focus and making sure that you're just on top of it and i think yeah. i just gotta really nail that home mm -hmm. it's like right now this attack you're doing i'm not yeah. gonna lie this is like on the verge of all in not it's not yeah. quite all in but it's you're you're putting yourself into a situation for no reason where you have this many units and they need to do damage. Otherwise, this could have been drones that are just wasted, essentially. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, sure. <laughs> like, this needs to now kill something for it to be worth its weight. And if okay. it does, if it kills nothing and if it runs in and runs away, or if it runs in and just dies, it's not going to be a great situation for you. And Like, in terms of what it could have been for you. I'm not saying that. So this is where a lot of people get confused as well. I'm not saying that it's going to put you in a position where you're going to lose to your opponent right now. Like, you're way ahead of this guy right now because this guy's playing a way worse game than you are. But, nice. if, like, in general, if you're, like, doing, like, a time trial, like, if sure. you're comparing yourself to what could be better, this is not ideal because... Okay. Think about this for a second. How many bases does, you, does Terran have? He has two bases. Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How many bases do you have? Yeah. You have four. Three going on four. Okay. And who gains advantage with the current base layout right now? If every if a second goes by, another second goes by, another second goes by, who gains the advantage? Do. You exactly. You do. You're mining more than he is. You're getting ahead of more every second that goes by. You get ahead, further ahead, further ahead, further ahead. It's like it's like a fucking exponential graph where you just start spiking up, and he like kind of fucking doesn't really do that because he doesn't have the available economy to do that. His okay. is kind of like linear almost, whereas yours kind of like fucking starts to spike like almost directly up and the more bases you get. Now, okay. not only that, but which race between Terran and Zerg gets advantage when both players play in their base? Like, uh, Terran gets... Wait, no. That's a good question. I guess we have creep, but they have tanks, so... Oh, it's definitely... It's Zerg, definitely Zerg. It's definitely Zerg. Zerg? Zerg? Okay. It's because of creep, yeah. Like, if both yeah. players sit back defensively and he's not killing creep and you're spreading it, you're absolutely getting ahead. Because you're okay. claiming more map every second that goes by. That's why creep spread okay. is so important. Okay. And now, what are these lings going to do? Also, oh, this guy's... going to fuck him up. 
Well, yeah, they are probably because this guy doesn't know how to use fucking hellbats. <laughs> this guy's pissing me off, but he never uses hellbats and he made an armory. Yeah, uh, this guy used like hellbats have more health than than hellions by a lot. It's like 130 health or some shit versus uh, 90. And then also they do a, a wide arc uh, cleave instead of a long line. So they actually hit like six lings or like five lings at a time when they get in their face. Sure. Like it's such a fucking better unit. And it does more damage yeah. too. But anyways, yeah, you killed uh, some marines, you killed two hellions, and you killed like zero SUVs there. So his yeah, economy... Yeah, like that attack for you. And then but now if I look at production, I guarantee you're making units again. There you go. You're making 11 roaches now. So you just lost what you felt like you had map control with. And then you're making sure. things that now will try to give you map control again. So you've made units to not make drones, to then go suicide, to then make more units. Sure. This is no, something people do that. all the fucking time. And this it made no sense to attack there. Because I feel like you attack there because you were thinking to yourself, uh, I'm just going to make units right now because I feel unsafe. And then you attacked him because you were yeah. like, mm, he's not doing anything, so I'm fucking freaking out now because I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Uh, I'm just going to attack him because I want to feel like I have some sense of understanding the game right now. And then you attack yeah, and you lose it all. And yeah. then you go, uh, I just lost everything, so I feel unsafe again. So I'm going to make army again. Yeah. yeah. I This is a common problem of every... And it's because you, this is why where game understanding comes from. And this is exactly what I talked about with the Protoss player, where I was like, sure, he just on, does it. My door. Okay, all sure. Right, yeah, no problem. Take your time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi, chat. How you doing? Looking good today, chat. Looking sexy. Uh, we'll probably wrap up the coaching lesson here in just a minute. I'm going for an hour 20. Hi, vibe. You're looking sexy. Thank you. Hello. Hello, guys. Okay, sorry about that. No, you're all good. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that, you, you, you kind of nailed it. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it just... Uh, uh, what's it called? It's... Yeah, it's just like the, the sense of not understanding the situation of the game, and you just start making attacks happen because you just want some sense of reality here. You're like, oh, I need, I need to... My brain is fucking on this overdrive, fucking overthink process of like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Attack, let's just find out what the fuck's going on. And then it's like you have this like thing that brings you back to reality here where you like lose an army and that somehow makes you feel more safe. You're like, okay. He's still actually. at That's his base. A really weird psychology behind that, but yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why either because in reality for me, if that was me playing this game, I'd be like, fuck, I'm, let's get up in drones. God damn it, now I'm further sure, behind than I should sure. be. <laughs> sure, okay. Because what I think what you, what you should think to or what you should think about and what your general like theme of your mindset should be is you should think that like there's like two gears that need to be turned and only one can be turned when one is finished. It's like a puzzle. Well, every game is like a puzzle where it's like, okay, I like you they have like a crank and you're turning one gear and this is a macro crank, okay? And the, and it's okay. designed in a way where it says I have to get to 85 drones. Like that's the like that's the magic number. You're just cranking it as much as you can. You're threading the needle as, as tight as you can being like, what can I get away with? to get this many drones out and throughout the course of the game not die and sometimes you have to abandon it and just like move to the other one if you're getting all in which is the army crank okay. but if like if if for whatever reason the game is a macro game or if he's slow at attacking you and you actually get to that 85 drone mark the crank for army spins really fucking fast now with no resistance and you're like jesus christ i'm making army so fucking quick now but every single less drone you have it'll be harder to spin the army crank because you'll make it slower. That's that's how you should be playing Zerg every time. You should think to yourself, if I get to ideal, ideal drone count, it becomes... The game becomes... That's why, like I said, Zerg becomes like no longer a punching bag, but now they're just like... Now the other race, the other player yeah, is now scared. Fly. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. once you have ideal drone count, you can now go, you know what I can do now? I can make army all game. Don't have to make any more fucking workers, really. Unless I make, like, a bunch of spines and I need to make one round of drones, which is whatever. But realistically, you're just making army all game. And Zerg is so fucking scary when they get to that point for everybody. Because it's like having 
10 star ports, 10 robos, 10 gateways, 10 star gates, uh, 10 fucking factories, 10 barracks. You have all fucking buildings because all you need to do is make a spire and make a roach warren and you can suddenly make 30 mutas at once followed by 30 roaches at once. You can make anything you fucking want. Like Zerg yeah, is so right. fucking scary with how they can tech swap. But you can't do that shit properly if you fucking have 45 drones or something and you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, need to sure, make some fucking sure. Zerglings and suicide right, them. <laughs> right, right, right. Don't do the whole Zerg. Okay. Yeah. okay. Like it Deal. just, it slows you down and it makes it to where like when you, you can't transition now because you're broke as fuck all the time. Right. Okay. No, that makes sense. It's a bit enlightening. Yeah, it's it's very important. Like it, that is a that is a general theme, a general rule of thumb for Zerg that if you understand that, if you understand I need to get ideal drone count and then I can do whatever the fuck I want all game. And then it's just adding on more upgrades and adding on more tech as you go at that point to do whatever you want. You can just make decisions on the fly as to what you think is intelligent here and you can just kill them this way. This is like for instance, okay. if you watch my games in ladder, a lot of times I do muta swaps. I'm like, "You know what? Time for a muta swap." And it fucking crushes because I have a good economy going into it. But if I if I literally was the guy that was like, okay, I'm gonna stop making drones at 30 and make a bunch of links. And I'm gonna stop making drones at 45 and make a bunch of units. And I'm gonna stop making drones again at 60, make a bunch of units. And I'm not done droning until 12 minutes in the game. When in reality, I should have been done droning at like seven minutes in the game. I'm gonna ha not have the power. I'm never gonna do a meter transition because I'm always gonna be. You're gonna look at my bank and be like, well, Vibe always has no money, and he also is never maxed. He's always at like 140 or like 160 supply with like 300 minerals in the bank right now. Because he just never has... This is a crazy game. He just, there's a lot of action back and forth. But in reality, a lot of my games are like... Okay, Vibe has 2,000 minerals in the bank and he's maxed out right now. And he's got fucking 70% of the map covered in creep right now. And then I'm like attacking, 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 attacking. I throw my army away and people are like, hmm... I don't know. That looks dicey for Vibe right now. He just lost his army. And then suddenly 40 fucking mutas pop out of my hatcheries. And they're like, okay, mutas are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like that situation happens all the time. And it's simply because you just have to understand how to set up an economy. That needs okay. to be a goal. Okay, I'll make that a priority. Yeah, it's very important. And then it, the hardest part is learning how to like get it there without dying. Yeah, that, I mean, that, makes, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, how's your time looking? Are you okay? Or you gotta go? Um, I, my son just woke up from his nap, so I, I, I do, or else I would, I would talk with you all day, because yeah. this I, is fantastic. I assumed, because that's, that's why I gave you, that's why I asked you a question. Hey, Daddy! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. No, you're, but, um, you're totally fine, man. This, I, this I get been, it. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, uh, I hope it helps, and this is gonna be a VOD. And okay. seriously, like, go back and listen and then really focus on the things we talked about. And just okay. really, because you have beta GM, I, we could have talked about that again. Um, but really focus on spinning your, your energy on your queens. Focus on spinning your larva quickly. And just try to learn, like, how to not die with as little units as possible to get to that drone crank of 85 as quick as you can. And then go massive military switch. And you'll have so much fucking success. Okay. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Really focus on your, you your it, man. mechanics, man. Creep spread, huge. Do with that shit, and you're good to go. But okay, I hope you have a good rest of your day, dude. I appreciate you doing a coaching hey, lesson. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll send you a message on Discord by like tomorrow with this, and you can watch it whenever you want again. Okay. Perfect. I know you do, buddy. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Have a good day. All right. All right. You too. Later, dude. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I just picture his son being like, "Dad, I'm hungry. Dad, I need to go to the bathroom." <laughs> He's like, hold on, this fucking vibe is still talking right now. Let him finish really fast. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Equinox, thank you for uh, doing a lesson as well. I hope it helps. Um, you know, again, guys, th th this is one of those lessons where there was emphasis on wanting to do theory and strategy talk and re reaction analysis and stuff like that. And we did talk about it. It was a lot of it. This is something that is very time consuming to talk about though. I'm not going to lie. It's it, because every situation is different. So we talked about it a lot, but also it's one of those things where it, the, I'm not even shitting you. The real way to get better at the game is hundred percent through your macro and good macro is harder to do, which is why 
it's not something you I can like as as a former pro gamer as a gm level player who is currently like rank what what am i like rank 60 or some shit on my other account i uh, let's see what i am right now uh, go to go to ladders right now let's find where i am just this this is to give you a, a visual of what i actually am where am i it's a lullabiv 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 it's vibe lol backwards the fuck am i am i lower than i thought and i passed my name the fuck am i I'm like 5100 i think right at the moment am i here i don't want to look for this too much longer the hell am I? 132? Did you see it? Am I just blind? Oh, I am right there. Okay. I'm like, oh god, I, I tanked yesterday. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm rank 132 GM, okay? Most people that are watching coaching lessons and watching fucking other shit, they're gonna be like, man, if I could just be GM, you know, that's fine. But the, the real... Oh, fuck, I forgot my point now. <laughs> What the fuck was I even saying? I spent so much time looking for myself. I've forgotten now. Holy fuck. See, I'm, guys, I'm rank 132 GM. I don't have a good memory. I fucking forget shit like I'm fucking going senile over here. It's all good. You uh, you don't need to know... Uh, like, if you know the game really well, you're a way better player. But, um, like, you, you trust me. You game knowledge does help. It does, but it's not like necessary to be GM. You could seriously be a fucking monkey in GM, who just is like banana, banana, banana. But instead, you're like bio push, bio push, bio push, and you just cheese, cheese. Yeah, you could do the same thing over and over. You get GM, literally, and it's simply down to the fact that if your macro is fucking flawless. The more flawless it is, the stronger you're going to be. It is so real. Also, micro is relevant too, obviously. Uh, micro does come into play as to how to be efficient sometimes. It really, it, that definitely is a thing. Not at low levels though, but higher levels, micro is a thing. And just understanding how to be efficient with your macro and understanding how to micro your units. Those two things, if you're good at those two things, yeah, you get GM immediately. That's, uh, you don't need to know all this, like, in-depth strategy. Even though, if you do know these things, it helps a lot at making you make good decisions in the game. Anyways, much love. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm, I, this is kind of a run-on point here. But, I hope, you, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Good luck to you. I hope this helps in any way. Um, definitely more of an abstract coaching lesson. But, see you next time. Peace out, guys. Take it easy. Much love.